This is the second video in a series called Parallax on the Web. Parallax on the Web. In the first video, we looked at over 20 examples covering eight different categories of how really smart and talented people are innovating in this technique today. In the comments of that video, you guys linked to tons of other really impressive examples of parallax on the web. Just loads of great resources offered up by y'all. If you haven't checked that out, please be my guest. For the rest of this series, and I don't even know how many videos that will be, we're gonna be looking back and referencing those examples and looking at how to recreate them. And so in this video, we're gonna be looking at one of the most common uses of parallax that you will see in marketing and e-commerce websites. In that other video, I called it fixed background scrolling element. So we're gonna be building this. It's a mock online clothing store homepage that uses parallax in the header. You can find the files I used to create this example on GitHub. There's a link in the, in the description below. But without any further ado, let's get into it. To begin the project, the first thing I did was look for a good kind of um, image that had a good sense of the depth to it. That would enable me to uh, extract different elements and create the different layers of our parallax effect. So I found this image here of this bird and I thought, wow, that's really great. It's got a really nice crisp foreground. The background is nice and blurry so we can kind of, you know, um, take liberty with how we manipulate that the back of that photo. So I went ahead and created a logo for um, this, for this photograph that just kind of reminded me of like some like a blackbird is the brand and it's a clothing line. So I have this logo here and I made it in Illustrator so it can be an SVG. And, uh, but I, th I think it would be nice if it just kind of like went up and down and then the bird in the foreground. I already extracted all of these elements. Uh, so like here's the, the foreground bird right here. Here's the uh, logo right there. Um, there's a, this is the background, I, I desaturated it and I added some grain to make it a little bit more indistinguishable when I have it repeating in the background. And I also tried to make it as good as I could. I, don't, I think I could have done better, but I tried to make it like more of a repeating uh, image instead of just one photograph. So I did a lot of uh, masking and blurring and repeating and things like that. So uh, let me show you our workspace. Let's close Photoshop, we don't need it. I'm going to drag this into Atom. I've been using Atom lately. I quite like it. And I have CodeKit here running our code. And I started the workspace using a framework called Skeleton. Skeleton is cool. Uh, I, this is the first time I've ever used it, but um, it's, it's nice and lightweight. There's not much to it compared to the other frameworks that I've been using in the other series. So... Um, it's cool. Maybe I'll, I'll focus more in on Skeleton at a later time, but I just use Skeleton as the base styles and, and also a simple grid that um, I might want to use later on, but I'm not using the grid to begin with. So what I have uh, here is a, a Jade file, which is very basic, and the only thing in it that's kind of notable is that I have this section called Content, and uh, in there is a, is a headline and some lorem for a paragraph, and it's just because I'm doing a clothing store, so what I want to do is create this parallax header above the clothing store uh, HTML that I have here. Also to note, I have a div right here with a height manually set of 2,000 pixels. The reason I did this is because it is a parallax scrolling effect that we're going for, so I need to have the browser be scrollable, so I just made this really big div so I, I can scroll up and down no matter how uh, high I have my window here. I also have jQuery um, script added and a jQuery or, and a functions page, which is completely blank at the moment. So here's my SAS. I have the base styles here, which just take care of you know the font and this um, this uh, what's it called this article and a few other defaults that Skeleton didn't really take care of for me, but we took care of it ourselves. So let's start in our Jade file here. This gets compiled to the index.html, which is the, what we're looking at here on the right. Now I have, as I said, this section here. Let me collapse that there. What I want to do is start right above the section. And I'm going to create a, a new section, or rather the HTML tag I'll use this time is header. And in this header, I want to have all of the elements 
be able to be placed, and I want this header to push down the, the section content that I have currently um, marked up. And I'm going to push it down and create a parallaxing effect. And the effect we're going to use, if you remember the video last uh, week that I outlined a bunch of different parallax types, the one we're going to be using is a fixed background moving elements. That's the one that you're going to see a lot for headers, and, and it works really well, and that's why. So let's get started. Um, I'll call the header uh, bird box because it's a box, and we're going to put some, some birds in it. Um, so the, the header bird box is going to contain the background image itself. And then inside of that bird box is going to be um, a few things. There's going to be the logo, so I'll just start there, logo. There's also going to be a the, the bird in the foreground, so I'll just call that the forebird. And then I also found um, a, a picture of like a, a, a raven in flight, and I uh, blurred it and everything like that. Let me show you what I mean by that. I call it, I call it back bird. It's just like a little... It's just a blurry uh, bird looking <laughs> image. And uh, I want to put that in the background too. And hopefully this will be like in the background behind the logo. So the, so the, um, the parallax layers that we talked about um, last week, you know, the background, midground, and foreground, I'm going to use the, the, the landscape as the background. And I also want to have this, what do I call it? Backbird? 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 Backbird singing in the dead of night. Um, so I'm going to take the backbird and the and the background, the landscape, as the background. The logo is going to be in the midground, and the forebird is going to be in the foreground. And we're going to use these layered elements to create this parallaxing effect. So that's really the markup of the header. It's, it's really quite simple. We have our elements all there, and we're going to use a lot of CSS to round this out. So I'm going to go into my layout, uh, my layout SAS, and in the section called Parallax is where I'm going to start. And I'll start with the bird box, which is the header. And I'll begin with saying position relative. Now, the reason I do position relative is because I'm going to have all of these elements that are in the in the bird box, these parallaxing elements. I'm going to have them all um, uh, absolutely positioned within the bird box. So the bird box needs to be positioned relative so that it can be an anchor for these different parallaxing elements. So position relative is super important. And the height, I'm just going to have an arbitrary uh, height. Let's just, let's just start with 600 and see if that's good. And uh, let's start with the background. This is like the, probably the most important part of the bird box. The background. The image is going to be URL, and it's going to be slash images. You notice I don't have it in assets this time. That that's a that's a skeleton thing. I didn't feel like changing it because it's just a one pager example. Anyway, so images uh, bird dash bg dot jpeg. Let's see what we got. All right, that's the that's the background right there. It's really big because I wanted it. Why is it really big? I don't know. It's just really big, so I need to shrink it up. So uh, let's say um, size contain. Okay, that looks good and position top center okay so if we scroll up right now we just see that this box has a background and it's just getting out of the window it's just going up but i want to have the fixed background style so this next property and value that i'm going to write are really what makes that magic happen i'm going to say attachment fixed save and now I can see that the background isn't going anywhere. But I got this little jiggliness, and the background isn't working right in terms of the size anymore. So what I want to do is, instead of saying background size contain, because what background size contain does is it will, it will make, it will stretch the image to where 
its tallest side or widest side is hitting the edge of its container. So the image is going to be completely contained in that in the, uh, in the box. But since we know how exactly how big that box is going to be, we can be a little bit smarter with the size of the background and work uh, and make the browser do less thinking. So we can just say um, its width is going to be auto and its height is going to be that 600 pixels. There you go. Now it scrolls a little bit better. I wonder if it's scroll janking because the image is so big. Let me make it smaller. Okay, it was scroll jinking because the image was so big. I mean, that's, that's fair enough. Okay, um, fix that. So now we see that the background is fixed in the, the space. And it looks as if this white box below it is actually scrolling above. But the truth is, we're scrolling, we're scrolling the bird box away, but the background behind it is fixed. Okay. So let's jump down to the next bit inside of the bird box, which was the logo. The logo, uh, let's say its height is 100 pixels and its width, I'm going to stretch it all the way across, um, stretch it all the way across the, the available width. And um, the background, I want to see what I'm working with, so I'm going to say, uh, background color is pink, point, and uh, the image is going to be URL, and I have an SVG for this, and that's going to be an images uh, black bird logo dot SVG. And I want it to be uh, position center. Let's see what we got. Okay. So it's repeating though. Let's turn the repeat off. Uh, repeat, no dash repeat. Okay, good, good. Okay, so now let's see how it's, it's anchored up to the top. We want to use position, absolute, to get it down. And we'll say we want to make it 50% from the top. And since we know that it's a height of 100 pixels, we'll say a margin top is negative 50 pixels. And what this does is it just pulls the logo back up straight to the center. So let's look at our parallaxing effects so far. We have a fixed background and we have a, an absolutely positioned element in there, a centered element. So when we scroll, we can see that the the logo is kind of acting independently of its background, and it, we already have a parallaxing effect. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Let's do the next one, and let's talk about the forebird, right? Forebird. Can I make this bigger for you guys? There we go. So the forebird, let's say um, background color is pink. I'm going to stop there, the pink, and I'll show you what I want to do in terms of the, of the positioning and size of the forebird. So the forebird, I want to give it a width of 960 pixels. And I look at the height of the forebird here. Uh, where are you, forebird? And I look at the height of the forebird, and I can see that it is 733 pixels tall. Even though it's 444 pixels wide, 733 is, is the height. So let's give it that exact height, 733 pixels. Now, we'll say background image is going to be that URL forebird, right? So slash images uh, for slash or dash bird dot ping. Where's the forebird? Oh, images, plural. Let me take this pink and do something in SAS called trans 
parent eyes. And that will just give me a, um, an RGBA value for pink. And so you do comma, and then uh, let's say I want it to be 0.3% uh, opaque. And that will just make my pink a little bit less pink so that I can see behind it. So now we have, we know where the box that contains our forebird is, and it's 960 wide, which is gonna be the general sense of uh, the width of my browsing experience. Um, but I need to center it, because it's off to the left and it's up to the top. So we'll say, oh, but before we do that, let's take the repeat off of this background. no repeat, and we'll position it to the background position will be uh, right and bottom. It doesn't matter because it's the full height of its thing. But we just want to push it over to the edge. There we go. Cool. Now let's um, position the, the whole box. And we'll do that by making it absolute. So position absolute and we'll say um, left 50%. Okay, it's way over there. We need it to be centered though, and now it's starting in the middle at 50% left. So let's bring it back with margin left negative 480, because 480 is half of 960. So this will bring it right in the, in the center there. Now it's too tall, it's, it's too too big, so let's move it down from the top. So let's say top uh, 200. Uh, a little bit more, a little bit more. How about 300? A little bit more. How about 350? It could be more. 380? That's good. Get rid of this pink. Where's that pink? Okay, and then I'll go to the, um, the parent, which is the bird box, and I'll say that its overflow should be hidden. And that will get rid of this little the wood that's sticking out below the box. And it'll give it that feel of it being in the foreground. Good, good. So the bird and the logo are scrolling together, and the background is fixed. And let's just quickly place that last element there and this one is called, what is it called? It's called Backbird, <laughs> not Blackbird. <laughs> oh, it's so funny to me. Maybe it's just late at night. So Backbird is very similar to the Forebird in the way that we're going to be positioning it. So let's quickly hammer out our width and height. The width is going to be uh, the same 960 pixels. And the height doesn't need to be that much bigger. What's the height of the back bird? The dimensions, uh, height is 298. So let's do that, 298 pixels. And the background, we know this already is image, URL, images, back bird, dot ping. And uh, repeat, no repeat. No dash repeat. And the position, uh, top and left this time, because I want it on the other side of the logo. And let's see what we get with that. Oh, there it is. There's that bird. I like it, I like it. But we need to center. Uh, we need to center this box now as well because uh, if we make if we do the um, let me show you how pink it is. See now it's not centered. It's just like in a left aligned box, so it'll like kind of like move with the scroll instead of saying staying centered against it. Position ab so loot. Um, left, again the same recipe, left 50% and the margin left is going to be negative 480 pixels which is half of 960. So, oops. 
Oh, uh, it's flying over here. Did I spell something wrong? Aha, uh -huh. absolute. Okay, now it's where it should be. Let's get rid of this pink. Great, that's, that's what we want. Okay, so now that we've done the, the styling and the positioning of these elements, we need to animate them, or rather uh, control how they move when they're scrolled. So let's open our functions. And now how we tell that they're moving is we listen to the scroll of the window. So let's create a, an object window. And then we'll put a listener for scroll. And this is using jQuery, by the way. And then in that scroll, we'll have a function. So what we're saying is anytime the window scrolls, whatever I put inside of these braces is going to happen. I'm kind of a nervous Nelly when I develop JavaScript. So I always, like, I use these things too much. But they're, they're helpful for you guys, too. So con console.log. Console log is just going to print a little bit of a message inside of the console. So I'm going to open up the console here. And let's make it bigger. And um, refresh and start scrolling. You see, I've scrolled 40 pixels and 40 times the output of high showed up. So if I put a variable in here and I call it just like, like the window scroll equals this dot scroll top. This is more jQuery stuff. Okay, so what I've done is I've said, hey, this variable, when this happens, which is the window, when the window scrolls, tell me where this is in relation to the top. Tell me how far it scrolled. So I'll replace the high with a, a, a variable called w scroll. And now each time it scrolls, it'll tell me how far positioned the scroll is from zero from the top. See all these numbers? That's telling me how far I've scrolled. So when this top hits the top, it should be, say, around 600. Yep. So that is just keeping track of my scroll. No matter where I'm at, even if I go up or down, it'll keep track of it. So that's nice. That variable is going to be really helpful to us, actually, because we're going to use that in calculating how and where and whatever I want these logos and these birds and everything to move when I scroll. So the first thing I want to do is let's take a look at the logo. And I'll select it by saying class of logo. And then what I want to do with that logo is just like, it's just mess with the CSS, right? So let's go in here to the CSS and create a little, a little magic. I'm going to say transform. And I'll just and what I'm going to be and what I'll be manipulating is the translate property, uh, the translate value of the transform property. So I'll say translate, and I'll say zero for the um, horizontal and for the for the vertical. Uh, let's say just like you know two hundred. I just want to show you that when. I want to show you that when I scroll, the, the logo is going to be bumped up 200 pixels. Here we go. You ready? Oh, boo. What happened? Oh, I forgot the comma. That's what happened. OK. When I scroll, the logo should be bumped up 200 pixels. Or down. <laughs> down, not up. So that's what happened. So let's take that 200 in our translate, and we'll, we'll, and we'll, we'll create a new number based on how far we've scrolled. So uh, let's end the quotations, and we'll put plus plus in here to add whatever we're writing in here to the string. So we want to we want to start with w scroll with a capital S, d, and let's say slow it down to two. So divide w scroll by two. And we need a, like this has pixels on here, we need a unit type. So uh, I'll just say percent and see how that works out for us. OK, let's scroll and see what's up. Oh my goodness, look at that. And I like this a lot because by dividing the pace of the scroll in two and moving it down, but only at half speed, you're keeping it in the center. As the box is closing, 
the logo is still in the center the whole time, which is really, really cool. And that's what we want from a mid-ground, right? We want the background to move slowly, the foreground to move quickly, and the mid-ground to be like the, that kind of fulcrum between the two. This is exactly what we wanted. Looks good already. Even without, even without animating these two birds, this, uh, this logo just changes kind of the whole look of the thing. But let's not stop there. Let's continue on with these, with these birds. Uh, so let's do the back bird. And we'll do the same thing with the back bird, but we'll do it a little bit differently when it, when it comes to um, its scroll pace. So instead of saying two, let's do four, because we want it to be slower. So we're going to divide it by four, so it's going to move, but, sl but half the speed as the logo. You know the funnest thing about making parallax uh, designs? Is that you just get to scroll it for a while to test it. You're like, yeah, you scroll, you scroll good. I love you. You scroll so hard. Scroll, scroll, yeah. Okay, the next thing we're gonna basically repeat this whole process for the uh, the next guy, which is the forebird. But this time, instead of making it scroll down, we want it to scroll up. So instead of making that number positive for the translate, let me show you. Let me show you what I mean. Uh, inspect element. See this guy translate. If I scroll it, if I scroll it down, see how this uh, eighty-eight percent that is a positive integer, and we want to make that a negative integer if we want it to move up, and we want that bird to move up. So we're just going to put a negative sign right in front of the scroll for the bird, and press save, and see where that lands us. Okay, the bird's going up this time, but it's going up really fast. <laughs> but it's doing exactly what we want. Let's go back to the console. Okay, uh, so all we have to really do is now control the speed of the bird. Let's speed that down. It's divided by four. Let's try to divide it by ten. That looks good. That looks good. I mean, the, we're not seeing the bottom of the wood block. It's so like that, that. That like technically passes, but I think it's still too fast because look how fast it's covering the logo. And I, I think I think I'm okay with the logo being covered like this. That's kind of cool. But like this is kind of a little bit too much, especially when it gets behind that block of wood. So let's slow it down a little bit more. Let's break it down a half speed of that. Twenty is still a little aggressive. Goodness. Now we're halfing we're halving each half, so it's not like. It's not a linear divide here. It's an it's a it's an exponential divide. So we're not getting as much of effect when we half it each time. So let's go to forty and see if that's what we wanted. That's that's a bit more what I wanted. Slow down, bird. Slow down, bird. All right. So this is an example of the the parallax technique of fixed background moving elements. And I'm really excited the way it turned out. I like it a lot. Uh, I think it gives our, our store that like, really modern and dynamic look. It uh, does a lot to make the, <laughs> the Blackbird clothing. I love it. So this is a clothing store as well. And there's more parallaxing we can do on this design. And we've run out of time for this video. We've gone a little bit long. But next week we can add more parallaxing events or effects to this uh, design and make it like really, really pleasurable to use. Thank you for watching. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and you can be notified when the next Parallax video is going to be released. Psst, it's Monday. It's, it's every Monday. This episode was brought to you by the goodwill of these few individuals. They support the show on Patreon.com. And as such, they enjoy extra perks like extra videos and dev tips live chat. If you're interested in being a patron, that would be awesome. Here's something someone recently said about their experience as being a patron. All right, I'll see you next week. Until then, keep on hacking.